Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe UXP plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare and distribute your UXP plugin, whether that be to a Adobe Marketplace or uh, on your own website or to your clients. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks. And also down below, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I create. All right, so whether or not you're distributing your UXP plugin, to the Adobe Marketplace or your own method, you're going to be using the same file type, and that is a .ccx file. Um, this is actually an, a bit similar to a .zxp file in that it is basically a renamed zip file, um, but we're not using .zxps anymore because that is a thing from CEP extensions and not for UXP plugins. So what we need to do is prepare all of our code and then we're going to use UXP developer tool to easily create our .ccx file, which is easy then to install by double clicking on it or uploading it to the Adobe Marketplace for review. So you want to start off by obviously obfuscating any code or minifying your CSS and things like that. Um, and one tip for this is if you are starting to distribute your stuff, make sure you have a couple of folders. Um, in my case, I just have one folder full of all of my stuff. If I was to just obfuscate all the bits of code in all of this, I would no longer have my source code. So one thing we should probably do is create a source and an encoded folder. I'm going to put all of my initial code here inside of my source folder. And then we can create a, an exact copy in the encoded folder and encode the files in the encoded folder while keeping our source code. So as you can see here, we are missing these files because they're in new locations. We have our source and our encoded. We can now grab our encoded JavaScript, for example, cut it, and then use whatever obfuscator tool you like to use. I like obfuscator.io. Obfuscate your JavaScript, paste it in there. And if you have any other code like JavaScript in your HTML, or if you want to minify your CSS, you can also do that. But now we have our encoded folder ready to be packaged up and distributed in a CCX file. The way we're actually going to do that is within UXP developer tool itself. All we have to do is incredibly easy. First, we're going to add the plugin and then I'll go to my encoded folder and select my manifest JSON file. This, of course, we can double check it's going to run with our obfuscated code and we do indeed have our UXP plugin running even with our obfuscated code. This is a good way to test right before you prepare for release to make sure one last time with whatever level or intensity of obfuscation or minimization you use that it still works. But now all we have to do, if you've ever noticed under the actions panel, we can make this a little bigger, you might see this option here that says package. Package is actually how we package this for release. So it's asking us to now select a target directory for our plugin package. We can create this inside of our folder next to source and encoded. And we can just say dist for distribution. Now, when I select the folder, if you got successfully uh, created, it will say successfully packed your plugin. And you can check in the logs here of how it worked. We can load up the actual distribution folder and you can see it says 999 Nate underscore Photoshop. We can change the name to say like test UXP. And if I double click on this, you can see it's going to launch the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. And it, if this is something that hasn't been uploaded or accepted by the Adobe servers, you're going to get couldn't verify the plugin. And if this is the case, it's totally fine. Your testing clients, your distributable clients, whether they downloaded it from your website, will still be able to install this UXP plugin by clicking on install locally. This will give them a warning, just letting them know that, hey, this is developed by a third party, not Adobe or not on the Adobe marketplace. Uh, they will have access to do these things to your device and your network. So just have them click OK. And just like that, it's going to install and launch our UXP plugin in as of now Photoshop. And just so you know, this will appear as well. And it will show all of the plugins you have installed, including my one called Learning UXP here. 
which is now kind of like an installed professional plugin. And once again, just to reiterate, now that we have our CCX file, um, you can upload this to Adobe Marketplaces to get this accepted. For example, like Alchemist, you can download from GitHub, but they have an official version um, on the Marketplace as well, which is kind of like the official version. And that version will be trusted by the application pretty much no matter what and not give the user anything saying, hey, this is third party software. One last thing to mention is to also make sure you test your UXP plugin on Mac and on Windows, on M1s if you have one, and on an older system if you have it. Um, Windows, there's not as much variation, but of course, this isn't necessarily as extreme as um, an actual effect plugin where you need to do extensive testing on all kinds of hardware, um, but you do want to check that this works on multiple OSs and that all of your code, especially as this is a newer code, uh, base that we're dealing with all works. But that's going to do it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get up with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. And there's also links down there to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out other cool tools I make. Now, this was a quicker tutorial for a main tutorial, but this is a very important thing, so it gets its own main tutorial for the week. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.